do my coffee anyway. I thought I already had it, Bob. Yeah, Bob. I put a dog in the camera. Yeah, put my dog in the camera. Trying to fix this because it's a little unbalanced. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, if I can get my ass to get my coffee where I don't even know where it's at. Uh, hold on, five. What did I do with it? Oh, there What did I do with it? Rather? Not where did I do with it? What did I do with it? There it is. I got it. <clears throat> Yes. Hold on, Bo. Yeah, I don't need beer. I just say cheers and drink coffee. That's it. I mean, I got a beer downstairs. I don't even drink that often. Right, five? Come here, Bo. Come lay down. Come lay down. You got a hair on your nose. Come here. I'm going to get rid of the hair on your nose. Come here. Good boy. He's a good doggy. Look at you, Baba. You are such a cutie pie. Mm -hmm. You are. Mm -hmm. a cutie pie. Oh. I'm sorry if you're sick of seeing my dog. He's just uh, precious to me. He's a precious dog. Precious! Like Motown, uh, Smokey Robinson. Precious. He's precious. Good boy. I, I don't know. I must have pissed somebody off who was a, either a white supremacist or a fucking black person. You didn't like a white person bringing up Smokey Robinson and Precious. I don't know. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah, I, I'm waking up. So that's uh, here I am fucking waking up. Like, uh, I've been awake for. I think a half hour now. What time is it? Oh, no, an hour. I've been awake for an hour. Haven't showered. Five, what is that? Get that out of your mouth. What the hell did you just eat? Better not have eaten something bad. Don't fucking do that. What the hell was on my bed anyway? Did you bring a piece of food up here and leave it there? Come here. Whatever. Whatever, buddy. Come here, lay down. Lay down, you big boo. Oh! You landed right on my box. Come on, get up. Come on, get up. You landed right on my box, you big boy. Come here. Oh, my box of trash. You landed right on it. Come here. I just want you to be part of the stream, that's all. You big freaking dog. He's not super big, but he's pretty damn big. If you see his uh, wing, his, uh, his, uh, his, 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 what do you call him? Um, these things. He's got really big shoulder blades. Five. Don't go over there. That's my box of trash. I love you too. Yeah, I love you too.
<sighs> Once in a while, I just hand, I don't have a fucking thing. I was going to bring up, oh, yeah, King Cobra got fucking evicted. King Cobra JFS got evicted. Even my dog thinks it's hilarious. When he laughs, he kind of acts like he wants to play. That's him laughing. So my dog is laughing, technically laughing. Now, uh, <laughs> King Cobra JFS is fucking getting evicted. Oh, my goodness. I rather I ain't gonna lie, I'd rather see that guy uh get a better apartment. His apartment is dirty as fuck. When I say dirty as fuck, I'm talking about the walls, just the way it looked. I don't know. Of uh, lighting, he's got horrible lighting options in his room. I don't know why he fucking fucked with shitty lighting. But um yeah, when he gets a new apartment, maybe he'll have a better uh studio set up. But not that I care for his channel, but I do I do look at it once in a while just to estimate how fucked up a person with Asperger's can be. Mm. And, and then, or, and, or maybe they don't or have no fucking illness and they just placate it fucking uh, and, and play it out to the nth degree until the doctor says, yeah, you got Asperger's, but either way, man, the fucking guy, you know, he needs to fucking get it together. Man. Mm. Really? 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 Really, boo? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? You're not kidding, are you, boo-boo? Ow. Ow. Ow, man, boxer. He's got the boxer in him really big time when it comes to him. fucking uses his arms. He uses his arms like an arm wrestler. Arm wrestler. Oh. Five. Ow! See, look at that. He fucking loves using his arms. This dog. And look at the vortex on the side of his neck, guys. You can look at it as an upside down semicolon, or I mean, an upside down apostrophe, or an up or a fucking vortex. It looks like a vortex to me, though. If you look at it, it looks like a goddamn vortex on his neck on both sides. He's got vortex on both sides of his neck. Uh, I'll just wait for some motherfuckers to come in. Then I'll start ranting shit. I know there's somebody in here now, but they don't speak. They're one of those people who have to watch my stream, but don't speak. Bye. Come on, that's that fucking claw, man. Scratches me, dude. Just lay down. Lady, are you upset? I didn't mean to upset you. I didn't mean to upset you, boo. Oh, you are cute. You kind of look. You sometimes, if you have your head in the right position, you almost look like you might be a deer or something. I don't know. Yeah. But you're not a deer, are you? You're a fun color. Yeah. Hey, you almost got me an eye there. That's not cool. Anyway, my dog says hello. Okay. My fucking dog says hello. And he loves uh, women. My dog loves women. You should see him whenever I go around town and uh, there's ladies and they're all, man, he's fucking all about it. He must smell their pussy or something, I'm guessing. I don't know. And it might just, uh, you know, may, maybe it's something he can relate to because he's a male dog and he likes fucking, uh, you know, that pussy. Uh, is he discriminatory against pussy? No, my dog probably would fucking let anybody with a, uh, you know, Pussy, pet him, and, and, and be just as happy. Unless their vagina smells rotten or something, then he might take a dislike to that. But other than that, he's a great dog. I mean, he, did, he is a great dog, but he takes a dislike to the wrong smell. If you come up to my dog and you don't say hello and pat him right away, and he smells a cat, he'll take offense to the smell of the cat because you didn't present yourself right to him. So, but if you go and pet him right away, he'll disregard the cat sound. 
I know I don't have my mic plugged in. I don't even know what sounds better, but and last time I used that mic, it fucking um, the person on the other line of the phone couldn't hear me, so I'm thinking my mic is broken now. So I'll just keep. Maybe I'll just use this. Try to see if I can be heard. I don't know if I can or not. Can a motherfucker hear me? Can a motherfucker hear me? I'm about to vote for Trump. Can a motherfucker hear me? I knew that would fucking get them irritated. Just if they're a Democrat listening. Sometimes when you don't get anyone commenting, they're fucking Democrats. Can a motherfucker hear me? Oh, well. We'll just leave it at that. Can a motherfucker hear me, you know? Uh, I did a video uh, because I want to tell somebody they had a good mic because they turned their comments off, and I did the video. And... Uh, sorry if I look horrible. I just woke up. Give me a fucking break, all right? I'm fucking here. Probably I did comb it, but it just is uh, yeah, not looking really 100% right now. Oh, well. All right. Is that better? I think it's okay. I, you know, maybe I should sit up. That's what it is. I got to fucking sit up. I can't fucking do this. I got to sit up. There we go. Doesn't make me look much better, but all right. I'm sitting up. Anyway, so her mic was, you know, kind of fucking fucked up. And I was like, wow, she has to know that mic fu is fucked up. And then uh, I was like, well, she probably does, but she probably doesn't get another one until she gets another one. Or sometimes the mic in your phone actually works best. So I don't know what she did, but her fucking mic works great now. And Norma, Gene, uh, you're uh, a New Zealander with a very, very cute accent i just got to tell you it's extremely cute your accent and your innocent sound to your voice it's such an innocent sound your new zealand accent and your voice <clears throat> that uh, you know it's attractive to to me you know and then you know um i don't mind a girl that uh fluctuates a little on weight and stuff you know um, but hey if you're married you're married you know I don't even know if she's married or not. I'm not going to lie. Some of the New Zealanders got some kind of wimpy ass uh, husbands. And some of the UK people, same way. Uh, it doesn't mean they're all fucking wimpy or nothing, but, uh, you know, this, that's just how it is. Um, if they were Aussie, that'd be a little different. If they're Aussie, they'd be a little different. Um, but fucking definitely not the case. You got to remember, Aussies came from prisoners, and uh, they, they are some mean sons of the bitches over there. If you go over to Australia and you try to walk around with an American accent, you get beat up. I'm just saying. You get fucking beat up. I've talked to people that went over there, and they said, oh, Aussies aren't pussies, man. They're the last thing you would expect from somebody from the UK over in Australia. Um, they will fucking whip your ass, and they are strong motherfuckers. Now, does it doesn't mean people like in the big cities of Australia are like that. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I would like to visit Australia, but I've had people tell me that live there. Oh, I couldn't wait to get out of there. I said, you lived there your whole life and there's not one redeeming quality to it? And they said, hell fucking no. I was like, really? <laughs> that chick was telling me hell fucking no about Australia being nice. No, bullshit. She just didn't. She just had a bad childhood, man. She's the one who did the tattoo on me for free that I made the artwork for. And you know, I, I, uh, she she did all right on the tattoo. I mean, she could have done better, but the 
the thing is, you know, if you grow up in Australia and you grow up in a bad environment, obviously you're going to probably fucking hate it. Now, if you had money and you lived in Australia, you could live a good life. I mean, there's good places there. I mean, the Gold Coast. But uh, New Zealand also has some fucking beautiful northern. Uh, I don't know if they call it north or south. You know, the, the warmer parts of New Zealand are absolutely fucking cool as fuck. I mean, New Zealand is probably one of the best island land masses on the planet. As far as it's got seasons, it's got snow, it's got fucking, uh, you know, beaches. It's got, uh, you know, I don't know how warm the water is. Probably cold as fuck. It doesn't. Yeah, it's probably cold as fuck, the water. But I don't know. I've never seen New Zealanders. Let's see if I can find New Zealanders that fucking uh, surf in New Zealand. I'm sorry, I just woke up. Give me a chance. My face is even a little puffy when I wake up. And I did take a shitload of uh, my 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 pills. Uh, my uh, Kratom. Yes, I did. I took a shitload of Kratom. Um... Best place to surf in New Zealand. I'm just, I just want to see where's the best place to surf in New Zealand. What are the best places to surf for? No, I didn't mean beginners. I hate when they give you fucking shit like that when you're asking about surfing and they go, oh, the best place for beginners. No, fuck beginners. Okay, here's New Zealand's largest point break, but this is three years old. What the fuck is this? Oh! Yeah. If this commercial will go away. You for the fuck you. Yeah, I don't care about my broken phone. I really don't give a fuck. I have another one downstairs just like this I could use. Oh, that's some nice surfing there. Holy shit, those are good waves. So this is apparently their best surf location. What's it called, though? I don't want to listen to this music. Oh, it's called Perfect Surf. Surf at Reagan, but it might as well be Reagan. Sounds like it's saying Reagan. Um, let's see the description here. Beautiful surfing conditions at. Oh, now this one says okay, Reglan. Okay, sorry, Reglan. All right, my mispronunciation. The crack in my phone made me think it said Reagan. Hey, Baba. Um. Wow. It looks pretty over there, man. Shit. I'd fucking check it out. But I'm not a surf. I like surfing concrete. Because the wave, you can pick the size of the wave when you surf concrete. Uh, when you surf on, on ocean, you just have to hope you got enough energy in that wave to make your ride worth it. And then if it is worth it, because the waves, you know, and water is dangerous. Um you know, if you don't know how to fucking swim properly, which I do, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Sometimes even the best swimmers can be taken by surprise and you can hit a rock when you're being, when you crash and, and you, and the wave crashes on you, it can push you down into fucking, in Hawaii, they said, uh, my friends that were from Hawaii, when I worked at the golf club at Las Vegas country club, Las Vegas, they're from Hawaii. And they said, oh, you don't even want to know how dangerous that is because what happens is at, point, uh, at um, North Shore, if you hit a big, pretty big wave, a lot of people will get pulled down 
in a almost a vacuum type effect because there's these little caves underneath the water and they fill with air pockets and uh, the air pockets burst and then I, i'm not sure what it is but they can uh the air can push back in there and create like a toe and you it will pull you into the miniature little cave under the water and that's what makes the waves really big over there is these little caves under the water they're little air pockets and if you get pulled down boo boo's looking at me he knows i'm on live i know boo boo i'm talking buddy I know I have to give him some attention because he's like, Hey man, you're talking a lot. And you're not really looking at, me. but you gotta, um, what happens is you get pulled into those little caves and then stuck because you try to get out, but the water, uh, pressures and shit are, are not going to let you out, bro. So I, 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 you know, that, that's one thing I don't like about surfing. If, if you were to say what's dangerous, but that's not every, that's not every break area. That's just North Shore is specific to that problem. So whenever you see those guys riding those giant waves over there, you better know those motherfuckers got a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E. I mean, it goes up because you know what? You could get caught in one of those caves and then you got to try to fucking uh, continue your life. And if you can't get out, you got to know when to try to get out of them. And apparently you got to wait till a certain time after a wave crashes before you can try to climb out of them. Otherwise, the pressure will keep you stuck in there like glue and you'll die. But I don't know how true that is, but they were from Hawaii and they claim that's how it is at North Shore. Seven minutes ago, large law enforcement presence at home where Billy Mansfield Buried bodies. Hmm. I don't know who fucking that is. Billy Mansfield. Who the fuck is that? Oh well. Let's listen to this shit. There's large law enforcement presence here at the former house of serial killer Billy Mansfield. As the Hernando County Sheriff's Office investigators make a discovery inside the infamous home called by Spring Hill neighbors a house of horrors. A live report. Here with eight on your side, Marco Villarreal here as Eagle Aid HD here live for you in the center of your, of your screen here, folks. Hey there, Marco. This is a story that folks have been talking about in Hernando County in the Tampa Bay area over the last several days. Now Eagle Aid HD is here at the scene. We see a heavy law enforcement presence here. And from Eagle Aid HD, we can see that investors Seven minutes ago. work here at the property of serial killer Billy Mansfield. What's the very latest here on this story? Well, it's, it's interesting to note that we've had several, not only uh, Fernando County Sheriff's deputies out here, but we've also seen forensic units and forensic experts from USF out here. So something is happening. This is day two where we have seen activity at the home, at this property. Many call it a compound. It belongs to the family of Billy Mansfield. And we are told everything started kind of Tuesday morning, really early Tuesday morning. Gary Mansfield, who's the brother of Billy Mansfield, who right now is currently in prison serving four life sentences for killing four Florida women and one woman in California. This is where his brother and his father live, and they've been out here, you know, for uh, deputies, I should say. Law enforcement has been out here over the past several decades, several times, investigating things. Uh, but most recently, it was Tuesday. They ended up picking up Gary uh, Mansfield again on drug charges, and he was charged with several of that. From what we were able to hear from sources to chat to News Channel Eight, we were told that Gary, as he was being arrested, was telling deputies, "You know, I want immunity, and I'll tell you, there's bodies here, but I want immunity." Well, Damn! He kind of gave away the, the what what he needed to get that immunity. Why is my fucking shit turning ye or yellow? I mean, my fucking camera, now, I got I don't know why that's that yellow. They did a search out here. They did, in fact, find illegal drugs and other drug-related items out here. But then they found, separate to that drug case, they found some suspicious items that they have now sent to a lab. And this could be, two days later, why they're out here searching in the back of the property and what you're seeing on Eagle 8 HD uh, from up above is what they're doing out there. So, JB, this is kind of what we're seeing. It looks, it doesn't look as busy as it was on Tuesday, 
but it could be because now they are more focused on what they're looking for. Yeah, and I want to read some notes here, uh, Marco, from, of course, uh, Melanie Michael, who's been on this story here as well. Uh, she has uh, wrote that decades later, neighbors once again saw these investigators return here uh, this week. They have brought bulldozers here. This seems to be what we're looking at here from Eagle ADHD in the center of your screen. And Marco, you can't see the view that we're seeing here on WFLA now, but this is clearly uh, an excavation process here. Do we have any idea as to what's going on on the property as of this morning? Uh, from what we have seen, we've seen a couple people, a guy that mows his yard. I don't know what, what, who he is or what he does out here other than we did see him mowing the yard out here, but he's been able to walk around. We were able to see some deputies talking to a couple other people here on the property. But that's kind of where a lot of the questions lie right now because this is a large property. When I speak, spoke with neighbors out here yesterday, they tell me that this isn't just a house on a big piece of land. There are several uh, mobile homes, several trailers. And there's a lot of property out here. And so it's very possible. I see one, two, three, four, four uh, uh, mailboxes out here. So it's possible that there could be several res residences on the actual property. So right now, what they're looking for, from what I've been told and from what I've been able to see out here, they have a mobile command unit out here. And let me step out of the way so, you, so Peter can uh, show you kind of what we're seeing. We have the mobile Crazy. command center out here. We've seen an ATV going up and down this private road, which is Roundup Lane. And then we have seen along the road here, we have seen several other vans, forensic unit vans. And again, uh, we've seen one that belongs to the USF forensic experts. And we understand they're out here. So as to what they're looking for, we're not sure. The Hernando County Sheriff's Office has made sure, well, they have not confirmed with us that it is actual uh, human remains out here, but they found something, they sent it to a lab, and then other sources that we've been able to confirm with have told us that, in fact, they did find human remains out here. What that means, and a lot of the questions the neighbors had out here, and we even spoke with someone yesterday, uh, my fellow reporter, Ryan Hughes, spoke to a woman who believes her aunt may have been a victim of Billy Mansfield back in the 70s, early 80s, but now the question is if they do find Cuban remains on this property. Is that something that ties back to Billy Mansfield, you know, four decades ago? Or are these, uh, is this a fresh case? Is this something new? Is this somebody that has gone missing recently? And if that's the case, are there other people involved with some sort of uh, nefarious crime that, uh, that ended up having a victim buried or, or, or hidden on this property? So it's, it, there's a lot of questions right now. It's still the very beginning. And I'm sure a lot of these questions are the same ones that investigators have as they're out here just gathering uh, evidence and trying to find what they can here on the property, JB. Yeah, and when we're talking about these these potential human remains, and of course, so we'll get to the Hernando County Sheriff's Office here in, in just a moment, but these human remains, I mean, we have no idea what exactly that means if we're talking, if this is a, you know, a bone fragment, if we're talking about uh, an item that was connected to a body, whether it was a, a piece of clothing or, or what exactly we're talking about here. But Marco, in all likelihood, the remains that we're talking about here could have been here, like you said, for decades. I mean, that's that's what we're talking about here. If it's, it's, of course, connected to Billy Mansfield, these could be human remains dating back for an extended period of time. What was that again, Jimmy? Yeah, these remains could have been here for an extended period of time, right, Marco? I mean, we're talking about, I mean, 1975, mid-70s. Mid Jesus! Correct, and, and into the early 80s there. And, and this guy again, was a this, fucking uh, the, the, uh, weirdo. The person we spoke with yesterday, the niece of this woman that has been missing for a long time, for decades. It's almost as much as you want. I've never heard about it, so I don't know who the fucker is. There's more bodies. There are people out there that would almost welcome the conclusion knowing what happened to their loved ones and hopefully seeing some sort of justice even though he's already uh serving a life sentence if it was in fact connected to Bill Mansfield in some way and we have of course a live report here or, or a, a report that actually was filed a short time ago with uh eight on your side chief photojournalist Paul Lamison let's see what Paul had to say here this is a moment ago from Eagle 8 HD you are looking at the Hernando County Sheriff's Office searching the home where the serial killer lived. You can see they're digging up dirt underneath this extension to a home. You see they're digging 
And what they're doing is they're digging, putting it into buckets, and then they're moving the buckets over here and dumping it into this pile where they will then sift through and look. This investigation has been going on a couple of days now at the property here. You see they're dumping the dirt into that area. I'm gonna move the camera over and show you the area where they're digging, right to the side of this house. All right, so I've never heard of this fucking serial killer. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and just play the whole thing. It just came on like eight, 10 minutes ago, but I'm gonna look who and see who that fucking is. I've never heard of Billy Mansfield. I guess that's a serial killer or some shit. Um, who is Billy Mansfield? According to Wikipedia, William Mansfield Jr. is an American serial killer and sex offender responsible for the murders of five women and girls between 1975 and 1980. God. Yeah, but now they're going to fucking find more bodies. This guy was a complete fucking fuck up. And uh, he's 12 years older than I am. The dude. I want to see a picture of this fucking weirdo. Pics of Billy Mansfield. Showing pictures that match. Ooh, this guy's creepy. Looks a little bit like Charles Manson. That's a fucking creepy motherfucker right there. See this picture here. What a fucking scuzzball, man. This fucking asshole killed a bunch of women, man. I, I fucking can't believe I didn't know or hear about this guy. I usually hear about shit like that early, but because it's hard to miss stuff like that. I wonder what his psych profile was. Billy Mansfield psych profile. Serial killer Billy Mansfield psych profile. Here's something from Wikipedia. Uh, I don't think they got a psych profile. Maybe doesn't have one. But anyway, that shit's crazy, man. She not trying to juice up my live stream or anything. It's just hi, hey, five. How are you? Hi, Bubba. I know you are, but what am I? Look at those vortex on the side of his neck. Beautiful vortex right there on the side of his neck. Fucking dog is one of a kind, man. I don't know. If you know somebody with Vortex dogs or dogs with Vortex on the side of their neck, let me know. He is a good boy. He is a good boy. He sleeps with me every night. He curls up. He's a he's an oversized lap dog is what he is. Right, Baba? Yeah. Anyway, so let's see what else is going on here today. Who cares about fucking Ted Cruz? Go fuck yourself. Oh, yeah, let's go to the mob reporter and see what he's talking about. That guy's pretty cool. I like that fucking channel. And yes, yeah, subscribe to him because he's fucking got some cool info. The mob reporter. Cool guy. Let's listen to what he has to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, I don't want to listen to that shitty ass music that for advertising, but people are always asking what happens to all the stuff police sees in their raids and arrests aimed at bikers, narcos, and mobsters. Well, here's one answer for you. The mob reporter here with a peek at 4,578 crime guns being destroyed, one at a time. It's something of a tradition in many Central and South American countries. Police gather up all the guns officers have seized and stockpiled after the raids and arrests and destroy them with some fanfare. Some police forces drop them into an industrial blast furnace. Others run them over with a steamroller, or even a tank, or simply sawing and hammering. In Panama, they build a whole ceremony around it. The most recent one took place this week. Officers make sure the guns aren't loaded, then lay them out in nice, neat rows, all tallied and catalogued by type of gun. Some look like antiques. Others are modern weapons of war. One by one, they are brought to a workshop table and cut to bits with an acetylene torch. Seems a bit laborious, to be honest, but they seem to like it. Politicians and police officials often get in on the act, posing for photos as they awkwardly cut. All right, well, there's the only so much of that I can listen to. I mean, you know, you can't make an entire, come on, I like the mob reporter, but make an entire video about how they destroy weapons, I don't fucking even care. All right? So as much as I like the mob reporter, that shit's boring, all right? So moving on. Moving on. I just got to see what else is going on. Oh, Nomadic Fanatic. I do watch Nomadic Fanatic. He's uh, kind of uh, scripted, but he's pretty fucking uh, riot sometimes. Sometimes he's not scripted. His sound, he doesn't sound as scripted, but he's way too, uh, you know, into the Mickey Mouse shit. I don't know why, but he's fucking like into Mickey Mouse collection. He has a Mickey Mouse collection. And it's like, I don't know, man, when you're a grown adult, do you really fucking feel you got to have a collection like that? I mean, if I had a collection, it wouldn't be Mickey Mouse or nothing about Mickey Mouse, you know? I mean, I ain't gonna lie, though. My dad knew how to draw Mickey Mouse, like, really well. Like, in 10 seconds, it would be done, and he was really good at it. But the old Mickey Mouse was the best. The old one, it was almost black and white. Yeah, those were the best Mickey Mouse. But, yeah, I don't understand. Some people just fall into their infatuations with shit. I, if I was collecting something, I would probably collect... Uh, I don't know, vagina photos? I don't know. I, it's hard to say what I would decide to collect. Vagina photos, that would probably be a good collection because think about it. You'd have vintage vagina photos. You'd have vagina photos from, uh, you know, people with uh, deformities. You'd have vagina photos from people getting work done by surgeons. You'd have vagina photos from Hustler, Penthouse, uh, Playboy, you'd have vagina photos, well, or, and then you could also collect vagina icon or like uh, fucking little, you know, vagina uh, paperweights and vagina this and vagina that. That would be a fun fucking collection, you know. Uh, you could collect uh, the largest vagina ever caught on photograph. That would, you know, like that would be a fucking hilarious. Like if somebody came over and said, can I see your vagina collection? Oh, yeah. But first, look at the biggest vagina before you start, because you'll laugh at that. Check this vagina out. Holy Jesus. You know, it'd be like two watermelons put together, but in the form of a pussy lips, you know. But no, I'm just saying you never know. <laughs> That would be gross to fucking know somebody that had a vagina as big as two watermelons, like glued together. <laughs> Can you imagine a woman trying to walk around with a vagina that big? Or trying to get dick. Like, like it would even matter. How could you even get a dick through that? But anyway... <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I could think of some good things to collect. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll see what we can pull up here for collections. Not those kind of collections. I don't want to talk to a collection agency, but different kinds of collections. Let's see. Biggest vagina. Oh! No, it didn't show a big vagina. Oh. Oh. Uh, it's it's really not showing a, a giant vagina, but it's just showing a bunch of vagina pics. Oh. I'm starting to get sick looking at some of these vaginas. And I like vagina. But I'm starting to get sick looking at all these vagina pics. <laughs> okay, enough of that. I'm not going to look at vagina pics, man. That, that was gross. I like vagina, but not those kind of pictures. <laughs> Let's find another uh, collection. Um, largest collection of nose pictures. <laughs> Ooh, look at this chick's nose. God, I'm glad I didn't get a nose like that in life. Mine's got a little bulbicity to it, but that's gross. Poor lady. I knew a guy that I worked with at ABC Baggage who had a fucking nose like that, just like this. He was a dude, and not only did he have a nose like that, but his nose had red veins all over it. It was so, it was like, bro, I mean, you couldn't look at the dude and not think clown, but at the same time, a clown has a red nose. It doesn't have veins all through it. So he was like clowned and beyond. You know, that'd be a good name for a store, clowned and beyond, you know, where you could just go and anything clown, uh, you know, that'd be cool. Oh, this chick is missing her nose. Oh, my God. Uh, gross. I wasn't trying to do that. I was just trying to find collections of, let's see. Largest collection of, oh, wait a minute. Here's. Largest Charlie McCarthy doll collection. Here's something from Pinterest. Now let's just watch a little Charlie McCarthy. He's always funny, you know? Come on, where's the video? Come on, man, what is going on here? This is, sometimes you look shit up and it just doesn't, like, doesn't even show a picture. Yeah, finally. Hello. Steve again. Let me introduce you to my friend here. Hi, my name is Charlie. How are you doing?
Scramble bait. Well, you're right. How do you know that? Got it all over your shirt. Well, all right. <laughs> you I mean, got it all over your shirt. shirt. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, anyway, it's not that funny, but no, I was just trying to find a collection of any, you know, but I'm just bored. I don't know what to do. I woke up and drinking coffee. That's the sum of it. I don't really have a topic. Uh, I did a video earlier to tell somebody they have a good mic. Whatever mic they're using is good. But when I first did the video, it looked like I could have been jacking off. And it, I wasn't, but it looked like it on video. So I had to put my arm up while I was – and just show that both my arms are present because I didn't want to look like I was jacking off because that would be rude. You know, I did. It fucking looked like I was fucking jacking off. And I wasn't. And I wasn't, okay? Did that look like a Charlie McCarthy doll? <laughs> Anyway, if you drink coffee, uh, flaunt it. You know, like uh, if you're in uh, another country, and obviously there's only one in, but I mean, if there's somebody in, if you're from another country and you're drinking coffee, let us uh, let me hear about what kind. Is it Folgers? Is it Maxwell House? Is it New Zealand's, you know, a New Zealand brand name of coffee? And matter of fact, I wonder if there is such a thing. I doubt it. because I don't think they can grow coffee in New Zealand, but let's see. What is New Zealand's favorite coffee? Here's a summary from New Zealand Trails. The flat white continues to be a fan favorite in New Zealand. Offering up a drink that is stronger than a latte and smoother than a cappuccino, this middle ground is what has made it so incredibly popular both in Australia and New Zealand, as okay. well as across the world. I know what a flat white is. That's not fucking high tech. Or let's see. What, what is New Zealand's Favorite ground coffee. Here's a result from search. I just want to know because New Zealand is a fascination of mine. I like, I like the way it looks. It's just very visually beautiful. But I just want to see. I don't think they grow coffee there, though. Come on. All right, this is not going to work. Let's just go to YouTube and see what they say. Can new or women growing coffee in New Zealand? I just want to see. Oh, somebody has grown coffee in New Zealand. Twenty likes, zero dislikes. Coffee grown in New Zealand. Icarus Coffee, two thousand eighteen harvest. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my God, they grow coffee in New Zealand. I just gave it twenty one. I just made one extra like. Look at that. Coffee in New Zealand. Are you fucking kidding? On a boxing day today, how long is the picking season? Oh, uh, I would say another five or six weeks. February? Yeah. February, mid Feb. It's cool. But I mean, with all the warmer weather. I cannot fucking believe they can grow coffee yeah. in New Zealand. And a little bit of stress will stimulate right as well. Yeah. Well, we're just marveling over the amount of fruit down here. Yeah. It's just not right. So we're just being a little selective. Yeah. As to what we're picking. And we'll leave that to Ragnar. Right man, it's laborious to fucking pick coffee beans, man. Oh, we're going to get some rain. Look at how beautiful that is, though. Wherever that is, it's got to be the warmest part of the island. Mm -hmm. 
Hey man, I'd work on a coffee farm in New Zealand. I would work on a coffee farm in New Zealand. I swear to God, just because it'd be fun. I mean, it's a fucking unusual place to fucking grow coffee. Number one. And, uh, you know, they speak English. Yeah. But that's a trip. I'm just going to look at some more of this. He's pouring it into a machine to get hauled. He hauled. Even the machine doesn't do a perfect job doing that. Although that does look like they keep some of the fruit exterior on the some of the beans, and I think that's what adds flavor to the coffee, but they don't want too much of it. When they dehaul the coffee beans, I think they keep a few with the cherry or whatever they call it on the exterior of the coffee bean. Huh? Wow. This is interesting, actually. The pulp berries, I got to read this. The pulp berries are left to ferment in water for a day or so. Man, that chickie's got, it's got a nice booty hole. She bent over. I didn't see her booty hole, but I mean, I could imagine it. I cannot believe they go coffee in New Zealand. This is a trip. You can kind of see that the water runs clean up. Look at this shit, man. That's New Zealand coffee, man. I can't fucking believe it. I never would have guessed. Uh, now they're washed, and we're going to just carry them through and put them onto the drying racks. Wow, this is a trip. I cannot believe they grow coffee in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, it just flip, flip one side. Yep. And wow. they stay everywhere. Ah, ah. Yeah, it generally takes about a week of sunshine. So we're, we're under a, a paper cover here. So okay, let's see how long it takes to dry these. These are dried beans, which will no, not be stored in sacks for a period before the next step, hauling. Um, I thought they already dehauled them. I'm not sure what that fucking means, but oh well. I'm drying this detail. And that helps with the sugar migration. So after a week, then they go into some sinks, coffee sinks, and they can be storage for about six, another six weeks. Or um, conditioning. And it just even, evens up the moisture content. <laughs> So when they put the coffee beans in the sa uh, the burlap sacks, that just helps even out the moisture content that's still left in them after being dried, which I guess that makes sense. I don't know. Uh, I thought they were dried. But anyway, apparently they still have some moisture content and they want to even out the moisture content and they put it in these burlap bags so that the beans can kind of be together to kind of like even out the moisture. I don't know. Okay, the green beans, they call them green beans at that point, and they're ready for roasting, so. Wow, the roasting machine twirls the fucking coffee beans. Like a washing, like a dryer. Like a dryer. It's like a miniature dryer. I don't know about miniature, but it's, uh, it's actually pretty big. Oh, uh, well, it's kind of miniature, yeah. Okay, 
timing, temperature, and airflow are all critical to the end result. Perfect kiwi coffee. So see, guys, I've never heard of kiwi coffee. So now I got to fucking look into what, who sells kiwi coffee. I've never heard of it. Kiwi Coffee Company. Here's a matching Twitter result. With 100% specialty coffee available to buy on Amazon alone, it can be hard to find the best special coffee equipment for you and your daily brew. Here on coffeekiwi.com, you'll find everything you need to brew the perfect specialty coffee for your next cup of joe. I don't know what kind of beans they use, though. I'd like to know, but... Uh, I don't think, I don't know if it's a hybrid or not. What kind of beans do kiwis, oh, that's not how to say it. What kind of coffee beans do kiwis grow? Here's a Wikipedia result. But most Kiwis mostly drink Robusta. About 70% of uh, coffee consumed in New Zealand is done. So an instant coffee, which is predominantly Robusta. Oh, they drink fucking instant? If you drink fresh ground coffee, you're in the minority. Oh, my God. Are you fucking kidding? In other words, they, like prisoners, they drink fucking instant coffee. Oh, fuck that. No fucking way. But <laughs> there's no way I would. I'd fucking drink regular coffee if I was in fucking New Zealand. I would not drink instant coffee. They call it Robusta. Can you believe they're so used to drinking instant coffee? That's what they drink? Oh, my God. No fucking way. Anyway, it, <laughs> I, can't get, I can't get over that. That's fucking strange. Why would they all drink instant coffee? Makes no sense. Maybe somebody can answer. There's two in right now. Weird. Robusta. That's what they drink. Instant coffee over in New Zealand. Now, sure, you can go to Starbucks and you can go to coffee shops and get real coffee, espressos, a flat white and stuff. But they're not going to use fucking instant coffee for that. So I guess, but nonetheless, the people that go in the coffee shops to drink normal coffee in New Zealand are the minority. Otherwise, they just drink instant coffee. Are you fucking kidding? Holy shit. Uh, maybe that's because most of the motherfuckers drink tea. Uh, sorry, did I call you all motherfuckers? I didn't mean that. Uh, they drink tea mostly, probably. Let's see. What is a Kiwi's favorite tea? There are over 3,000 varieties of tea. That makes it hard to choose a favorite. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, growing tea in New Zealand. According to Ray T, about New Zealand, historically, tea was not grown in New Zealand, but in recent years, it has begun to be grown here. Oolong tea grown in New Zealand is available from Zeelong, which sells in the U.S. through Chicago Tea Garden. Oh, okay. Well, they do drink tea. I know that because they're basically clipped off from the English over in the U.K., so they got to drink tea. Um, how do most New Zealanders drink their tea? Here's a result from the web. Tea drinking has a long history in New Zealand. It, in the huts of whalers, 
and the rations of early settlers and the cultures of its immigrants. But chances are good that the selection is predictably handful of blends and herbals and delivered with boiling hot water. Well, that didn't answer my question right. Um, do most New Zealanders use cream in their tea? Here's a matching TripAdvisor result. New Zealanders Guide to Tea Etiquette. Let's see what this says. Come on. Pull it up. God, this is taking forever. Oh, my God. This shit ain't even pulling up. What the fuck? My internet's fast, bitch. Why are you taking all this time? Fuck you, then. Fuck you. All right? All right. Let's try something else. Um, let's just pick another topic, okay? What creature on Earth has the biggest anus? Blue whale. <laughs> <laughs> In absolute terms, the blue whale has the largest penis of any animal. Oh, I didn't say penis. I said anus, motherfucker. I don't care about penis. I just want to know about the anus. That's all. What is the biggest land mammal? Or no, that's not the right question. Biggest mam. Biggest anus of a mammal. Here's a result from search. <laughs> I don't want to. I actually don't want to look into this. <laughs> oh my God. Well, anyway, it's not that unusual. Let's see. Let's try another one. Biggest anus on a microbe. Here's the top search result. <laughs> it didn't come up with one. <laughs> Biggest anus of an invertebrate. Here's a result from search. <laughs> Looks like, um, damn, looks like jellyfish or something have the biggest anus. I didn't know that. Well, it doesn't say that. It just looks like that. Those are the first pictures that come up. I don't know why a fucking jellyfish would have a big anus. It doesn't even look like it has one. But uh, what is a porcupine's favorite food? According to Smithsonian's <laughs> National Zoo, in the spring and summer, porcupines shift to eating berries, seeds, grasses, leaves, roots, and stems. At the Smithsonian's National Zoo, the porcupines eat herbivore pellets and a variety of fruits, vegetables, and greens. Their favorite food item is corn on the cob. <laughs> yeah, but I guarantee they don't use butter. What is a armadillo's favorite food? According to animals, mom.com, ants and termites are favorite foods among armadillos. Their strong legs and large front claws help them burrow as deep as they need in order to find their favorite meals. Okay, well that's not unusual. What is the favorite fruit of an armadillo? This came back from a search. Will armadillos eat fruit? Uh, I don't think it ha I don't think they do. What 
What is the most consistent injury to an elephant? This came back from a search. I was just curious because, you know, if you're taking care of an elephant in a zoo, it's probably going to have some of its worst problems associated with its fucking bone. But I don't know, man. I, I It didn't come up with anything, but I was just curious. What's a Ibox favorite food? Here's a matching Amazon result. Oh, it said Ibox. No. What is an African Ibox favorite food? Man, doesn't read my. What is a favorite food of wild dogs? According to Canine of Mine, some of their most common targets include zebras, wildebeests, warthogs, antelopes, and gazelles. Wild dogs will also snatch smaller snacks, including birds, small mammals, and large lizards. For God's they sakes, they don't even eat anything else but meat. Let's see. Uh, what is a hippo's favorite food? Grasses. According to SeaWorld.org, because hippos' favorite food is short grass, they keep these grasses well trimmed, which may help to deter grass fires. Ooh, okay. What is a rhino's favorite food? According to National Geographic, black rhinos are browsers that get most of their sustenance from eating trees and bushes. They use their lips to pluck leaves and fruit from the branches. White rhinos graze on grasses, walking with their enormous heads and squared lips. All right, all right, thank you. What is a chupacabra's favorite food? This is the top result. And nothing came up. <laughs> um, what is Howard Stern's favorite food? Here's some information for Howard Stern favorite food. According to Medium, Stern also provides examples of some of the meals he eats, which are breakfast, egg whites, half piece of toast and fruit, lunch, salmon with one quarter baked potato and veggies. <laughs> he takes his nutrition seriously, but he barely fucking eats. If you say so. Um, let's see. What is Cardi B's favorite food? Here's a summary from Food Network. I'm so emotional, she narrated as she surveyed the fancy food landscape. Cardi B was set to enjoy lobster tails, heaps of sautéed vegetables, potatoes and beef, and a giant platter of crab legs is one of her favorite I bet you she eats heaps to get those tits to stay as big as they are, but she's fucking a dumb shit. I hate Cardi B. All right, let's see. Um, who is the Chancellor of New Zealand? Royden J. Somerville, QC. Here's a summary from University of Otago. Dr. Royden J. Somerville, QC is the current Chancellor. What is a Chancellor? Here's the definition of chancellor, a senior state or legal official. Okay, a senior of state, all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what a chancellor is. Uh, what is the most embarrassing moment for New Zealanders? Here's a result from the web. And nothing popped up. What? is a New Zealander's favorite kind of clothing. According to Teera, New Zealand does not have a specific national dress. Customary Maori clothing is the only form of dress that is distinctive to New Zealand. Kahu gives significant mana and on. What is a New Zealand Maori's favorite food? This is the top result. I couldn't even pronounce it right. So what is a New Zealand native's favorite food? 
According to New Zealand, succulent and tender, roast lamb is a Kiwi favorite. New Zealand lamb is held in high esteem throughout the world and I is one of the lamb. country's top export meats. I love lamb. Lamb's my favorite meat. I ain't gonna lie. All right, man, I'm taking a break here. Uh, I'm doing a live stream. I'm, and you already left too, so whoever was in the stream. Uh, I love fucking lamb. Jesus loved lamb, right? Jesus loved lamb, right? I love lamb. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. Am I Jesus reincarnated? I don't know. I th would he cuss like I do? Who knows? But Jesus, you know, Jesus would look more beautiful if he came back, right? Technically, Jesus is supposed to be super beautiful or something. But every picture I ever saw of Jesus, he looked half female and half male. I'm just saying. I'm not half female, but I got a dick. It's fucking ready to fuck. And that's it. I'm not Jesus. So, But anyway, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else can I think of? Uh, I know. What is a Rhodesian's favorite food? Here's information from Breezy. No, I didn't say Ridgeback. What is a Rhodesian meal? According to Breezy, three top rated Rhodesian Ridgeback puppies. Oh my God. You know what? I don't get it. Rhodesian. I thought Rhodesia is a country. So why do they keep coming up with a dog? I don't get it. Let's try this. Uh, what is Uganda's favorite meal? According to Peace Corps, in Uganda, the staple food is mataka. Other food crops include cassava, sweet potatoes, white potatoes, yams, beans, peas, ground nuts, cabbage, onions, pumpkins, and tomatoes. Well, that's believable. That's believable. Um, what is Africa's favorite melon? Sama melon. Here's a summary from Atlas Obscura. Hunting season would be impossible without the hydration provided by the Sama melon. It is of particular value to the sand tribes in the Kalahari Desert for its nutritious seeds and the high water content of its flesh. Okay. What is the favorite snack of North Africans? According to Culture Trip, couscous is the staple food of North Africa, a traditional Berber dish of Oh, fuck couscous. That... Fuck that. Um, what is the most decadent food of Arabs? Here's a Pinterest result. That didn't pop up. What is an Arab's... No, wait. Arabs that eat pork. According to Wikipedia, religious restrictions on the consumption of pork are... What sect of Middle Easterners eat pork? Here's a summary from Classroom. The two major religions associated with the Middle East, Judaism and Islam. Yeah, they all restrict fucking pork over there. They're fucking weirdos. Uh, what is the rarest pig on earth? Javan Wardy pig. According to Wikipedia, a recent study estimated a population of 172 to 377 individuals, making the Javan Wardy pig one of the rarest pig species. Hell yeah. That's fucking almost extinct. Let's see a picture of it. Pics of a Java. Uh, pic of a Javi wart hog. Showing pictures that match. And this is what it looks like. Wait a minute. Hold on. Shit. Man, they got some goofy ass pictures of them dressed up. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say Javi. I didn't say that. Said... Picks of the rarest hog on earth. This is the top result.
Oh, uh, the sheep pig is uh, one of the only one that popped up. Ooh, look at this pig. This is a nasty looking pig. Man, that's a scary looking pig, man. What is the biggest wave recorder in New Zealand? 23.8 meter swell. According to the Independent, a massive wave has become the largest ever recorded in the Southern Hemisphere, scientists say. The 23.8 meter swell was measured off New Zealand's Campbell Island in the Southern Ocean, according to the country's weather authority. Okay. What is the best place to buy land in New Zealand? Here's a result from the web. No, you can't even buy fucking land in New Zealand now in, unless you live there. They won't even let foreigners buy land in New Zealand. Um, but that's a good thing. Keep them fucking Chinese out at the very fucking least. They've already bought up most of the island before they came up with that law, though, or a decent portion of it. I'm going to get some more hot coffee. Ah. 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 Yeah. See that? That's fucking, that's a man right there. That's a fucking man right there, okay? I don't even work out. I don't even work out, okay? I walk, I carry shit, but I don't, I'm just strong in general. I fuck like a monkey and I'm strong. What more do you fucking want from a 56 year old? Ugh. Out there. <laughs> How are you, Bubba? You are so cute looking. Just sitting there like that, five. You are fucking cute, man. For a dog, you are really cute. You're a cute doggy. You are. I don't know who said you weren't cute, but they were wrong. I mean, I don't know who said you were not cute, but they were wrong. Ooh, he just had a uh, burp. My dog just burped. Right, Baba? Bob, hi, my big buddy. My big buddy, Boo. You big buddy? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? Why is this coffee spilling all over the fucking place? I have my lid on. Ugh. Ah. Mm. Cool wee. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get something to eat. I'm gonna do a video of me going to get something to eat. Why not? Haven't done it in a while, and this this phone, even though it's cheap from Walmart, it's a Verizon. It's it's pretty good clarity, and it's pretty the color scheme. You know, it, it matches the colors that are out there. But I'm gonna uh, like not like this fucking live stream camera. But I'm gonna really quick. I'm gonna see something really quick. Um, Uh, oh, I know. I know I got some money, but I forgot how much. Oh, well, uh, I mean, I, I don't get paid till Friday, but I got money. I just want to I just want to get something to eat. I'm hungry. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just go get something to eat. I'm going to make a video of it. Peace out.